Here's a quick demonstration of vocal stem cleanup in Spectre Layers Pro 8. By the time we're finished, you'll see why this is the best solution for achieving clean stems. Okay, let's get started. Here I am in Cubase 11 with a full mix on the timeline. It sounds like this. Let's unmix the track. When I double click on the clip, the audio editor opens. Go to Audio, Extensions, and choose Spectra Layers. Spectra Layers opens in the background. I'll increase the window size so that we can focus better on the spectrum. Okay, over here I'm going to increase the visual resolution so that we can see all the detail we need to. Now we're ready for the unmixed stems process. This is where the AI algorithms do the heavy lifting, and this process will give us the resources that we can work on later with Spectra Layers tools and layers. In the Spectra Layers interface, go to the Layer menu and select Unmixed Stems. And the dialog box appears. I'm going to click through it now using the default settings. Now the process happens and we have our track split into stems based on instrument type. OK, let's solo the vocal layer and listen to the result we've achieved with the unmixed stems process. When I solo the piano layer, you can see that it's empty, and of course that's because there's no piano on this track. Now the drums layer is really important in this demo. Let's solo it and have a listen. The bass layer is almost empty, but as you can see, there's a little bit of information there. Keeping it will help us maintain phase coherence and overall sonic integrity. Okay, now let's listen to the layer called Other. The same preservation concepts apply to the layer called Other, but the role of this layer will take on its own significance in this demo, as you will soon see. Here I'm zoomed in on a section of the vocal layer that has a percussion element in it that occurs in the 2 to 3K range. It's right about in the center of the selection. Listen. Now I'm zoomed in a little closer still, and I'm using the rectangular selection tool to isolate that percussion sound. Now I'm zoomed all the way back out, and you can see the selection in the context of the entire clip. It's tiny, but it makes a huge sound, and this is where Spectra Layers can really show its power. Let's see how many other sounds like this we can detect automatically in the layer. In Spectra Layers, go to the Select menu and choose Select Similar. The dialog box appears, and here I'm clicking through it again using the default settings. The process has discovered six new sounds that are similar to the selected sound. Let's listen to them all. Selections can be saved with projects for later recall. Go to the Select menu in Spectra Layers and choose Save Selection. The dialog box appears, and here you can give your selection a unique name and recall it later if you need to. The selection saves with the project. Okay, now it gets really interesting. Since this is a percussion sound, I'm going to move it back into the drum layer where it belongs. Note that I'm not deleting any audio content in this process. Here I'm repositioning layers so that the drums layer falls directly beneath the vocals layer. I'll solo them both and then select the vocals layer as the active layer. Move to the Edit menu and select Cut Special, Cut to Layer Below. When I do this, the percussion sound is transferred from the vocal layer into the drums layer. OK, let's listen to it. I've taken a short break from editing this video to do some extra work. I've done three additional passes with the Select Similar process. I've saved the selections, and now here I am importing them all back onto the spectral graph. 
After I cut this new master selection, the vocal layer sounds like this. Okay, let's try one more process. Here, I've used a combination of tools to make this selection. Let's listen to it. I'm going to drop this selection in the layer called Other. Select the Other layer and drag it up until it's right under the Vocals layer. Solo and make the Vocals layer active by clicking on it and then perform the Cut to Layer Below process again. The content from the Vocals layer now lives on the layer called Other. Let's solo that layer and listen to it. I'm finished working in Spectre Layers for now, so back to Cubase. Let's drag the Vocals layer out of the mix and start working with it on the Cubase timeline. Click hold over the Vocals layer and simply drag it into the timeline. Click through the dialog and now the Vocals layer has been copied into an actual Cubase track. As you can see here in the pool, a new audio file has been created. Activating the Source track takes us back to the Spectre Layers interface. Now, I can mute the Vocals layer because the Vocals live as a track on the Cubase timeline. Let's take a listen to the Music Bed soloed. And now let's listen to the Vocal track soloed. Here I've set up a quick remix to give the track a different feel. I have saturation and compression inserted on the music bed track, which remember is actually the Spectra Layers project on the timeline with the vocals layer muted. You can process it just like any other track. Here also, I have an automated send effect on the vocal track to get some controlled delay. This system is easy to learn and navigate. The way everything hangs together is so ideal. Remember, no audio data was deleted here. It was just transferred from layer to layer. This feature is perfect for maintaining stem integrity inside projects. And now with ARA2 functionality, the table is well set for the best results possible using today's tools on the Steinberg platform. We hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching. Spectra Layers Pro 8 delivers audio empowerment. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to the Steinberg channel.